Welcome to the More Gems Show. I'm Steve Moriarty, your host, and with us tonight uh, are my son, Michael, uh, who's in charge of the production and that great intro. I loved it. Uh, <laughs> good Hi, job there, Mike. Uh, really creative. Uh, <laughs> makes me look good. Uh, and also uh, my son, Jeffrey, who's in charge. He's our chat moderator tonight. <laughs> love love the hair, Jeff. Yeah. Everybody says I wear a hat too much, so I, I decided to let the hair come out today so everybody can see that. <laughs> Looks good, Jeff. So um, tonight uh, we're featuring uh, uh, Wheelow Opals. Um, been working hard all week on them, um, all week probably been two weeks or three weeks. Uh, we've added many, many stones to the website. Uh, we're up to over 100 uh, opals on our site. Um, so, Jeff, I, I hear you've had some issues with uh, travel, which Jeff continues to travel or tries to. Yep. So yeah. Where um, were you headed this time? Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands next okay. week. So you are headed. We are headed. Yeah, I just came out today that one of my flights was canceled. So I've got to figure out um, a way to fix that, but we'll, we'll make it work. So Yeah. So I, I guess some really cool places down there that you normally wouldn't get to go to that there, were available. Yeah, yeah. I think there's, if anybody watches uh, National Geographic, they, um, there was a show like a year ago about the, like the most coolest lodges in the world. And this was voted number one. It's out in uh, the middle of Ecuador in the cloud forest. So and it's a lot cheaper now. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff likes that because he's yeah. always shopping for a bargain. You know, he only travels to places he can get really good deals on, which is a smart way to travel, of course. As um, long as you're willing to go just about anywhere, which he is, and he does regularly. So yes. yeah, that's we'll cool. Hopefully, hopefully it all works out. Yeah. You've had to deal with COVID and yep. trying to get testing to work with flight yes. times. Yeah, and, it's just tough. Yeah. yeah, learning a lot about the tests and everything. Yeah. So, so it'll be an experience. Oh, good. Um, you want to? Just for some of the new people here and just to talk um, all the stones on the show tonight. Um, we're going to be offering, uh, I think, 30 and up to 40% off. Um, the coupon codes will be showing up on the show. Um, you can buy any of these stones if you go to moregems.com. I'll be placing links um, in the comments and in the chat. But you can go to moregems.com. There's going to be a big green bar at the top of the screen. That'll take you right to all the stones that we talk about on the show tonight. And um, you can add any of those to your cart. You can add the coupon code. It'll take uh, 30 or 40% off. And from there, you can pay credit card. You can pay PayPal. I think they have Apple Pay, Shopify Pay. And then also we offer Sezzle, um, which is uh, financing. I think it's uh, four payments over like six weeks. Um, and then if you want to do a layaway, you just got to give us a call then, uh, tomorrow, I guess, to do that. So hopefully that helps. Okay, cool. 
And and the forty percent is is on the stones that you'll find in the green banner. Um, so all the stones we're showing tonight are forty percent off. The entire rest of our Ethiopian opal will be thirty percent off, um, and we'll run that at least for the next couple of weeks. Um, so uh, take the opportunity. There's some really great stones on there, and and like I say, we I've been putting stones on um, for the last two weeks. Uh, I've recut a lot of stones and cut some new ones. Um, so there's a, a pretty good variety of of Ethiopian opal on there and then that you can get 30% off all of them. Um, so um, tonight I want to do a little shout out to some people that are regulars out there that I know are watching. Uh, Tim from Minnesota. Um, appreciate what you've done with us. Uh, Cynthia from Alabama who is also really into opal. Uh, John and Rose of course. Uh, uh, Chris and Christine uh, and Mike's Carrie who I'm sure is out there. And uh, last but not least, uh, Nancy and Joe, uh, welcome to the show. Um, so tonight uh, we'd like to start out with uh, showing you just how we start uh, with the opals. And I'm going to uh, show you just how to preform uh, Wheelow Ethiopian opal. So this is the piece of rough that uh, I'm going to preform for you tonight. Um, this material, uh, as you can see, there's a, a nice clear area in the center, and this has quite a bit of the parent rock on it. So this actually formed in a vug or a, a vacancy that was in the ground, and the, <clears throat> the opal uh, came up through the ground, and uh, either as a liquid or a gas, and it filled this vug or vacancy. Um, these are often places where organic material was and deteriorated and, and left a hole in this rock. Um, so it, it was filled by the opal. And now we're going to take this off and see what we have left. Um, this piece of rough weighs currently 44.43 carats. And I would guess we're going to get about a third of that. I mean, looking at this piece of rough, um, I can see that there is quite a bit of the, the parent rock around it. Um, you just never know how much, but it could be this entire end, could be this entire back. I mean, we could have a 10 carat piece of rough here. Uh, very difficult to tell in, in this type of material. Uh, where it's totally covered and only just a, a opening around the outside of the opal. Very pretty color, but uh, just not sure what, what we're going to get out of this 44 carat. So we're going to start up our vac and uh, suck off the dust that I'm creating uh, while I cut this with this Fordham. Uh, I've got a nice coarse bit on here, and uh, we're just going to cut away all this rock and see what's left over. Uh, So I cut through this pretty quickly. Um, the opal is a pretty durable material. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of this rock on the end of the piece, as, as I expected. I'd kept this piece as a, a, just a display piece to show how they do form in the ground, uh, thinking that it really wasn't going to be much of a, a piece left once I cut off this rock. I'm using a nice coarse bit here. And uh, as you can see, it takes it off very quickly. The, the parent rock is pretty soft, uh, sedimentary rock that uh, uh, comes off pretty easily. But I do cut away, and I, I cut everything all the way down to the opal. I've found that if you uh, leave some of this stone uh, while you're cutting, if you leave it in the holes that you find, sometimes they'll form cracks. Uh, from whatever you left. So I try and get it all off completely. 
and cut it, cut out any holes that are in it. You can see some of these go very deep into the stone and, and you just don't know when you buy a piece of rough just, just how far this parent rock is going to go into it. Uh, sometimes uh, it just goes so deep it, it's hard to figure out what to cut out of a piece. And often you end up cutting some of the, uh, uh, the sculptured pieces uh, just because of the holes that run deep into it. If you try and cut a standard cab out of some of these stones with deep holes, you're just going to have such a low yield that you'll never profit from the stone. So um, hopefully there's no deep pockets in this, but it's not unusual when you do run into them. This is usually a, a good quick process. Um, I try and do it quick because I've done this before where I uh, got partway through the stone, got interrupted, set the stone down, and uh, because I wasn't finished with it, I'd come back and, and uh, it would be cracked. You know, it just until you relieve all this material, it just is some stress in these stones. Uh, so you just want to uh, get started and, and finish the whole thing in one sitting without stopping has been my experience. So here's one of those problem holes you run into and, and they often go quite deep and it really makes it a challenge to get any yield out of a, a piece of rough once you run into one of these. And it's probably like one out of five stones has just these deep holes in them. Do I ever cut them wet? Um, no, I haven't. Yeah, I don't know. Been successful not cutting them wet, so not sure what would be the benefit. Be throwing wet stone all over me. <laughs> So being rough on these doesn't seem to affect the opal. You know, I've never really had much issue uh, with it cracking while I'm doing this. But it does happen. You know, I'll, I'll show you a piece later that uh, I had a couple of pieces this week that I had issues with. Um, that, that just during the, the cutting of the material after preforming, they, they just cracked on me. Uh, it's, it's gotten better. It used to be like one out of three stones crack, and, and now it's probably one out of ten. I attribute that as much to the, my supplier buying better goods as to my technique. But you can see just how deep this hole is, and you know it, it's going to cut the yield down significantly on this on this opal. I really try and get all of this out, you know, because you just don't know what's causing stress in the opal and uh, these pockets just seem to be where the cracks when you get them, they radiate from these small pockets. Well, we'll see how far that hole goes down and whether it's got to be carved. You know, I'm not uh, 
fond of carving because it takes so much time. But sometimes you get a piece like this that it's, you know, it's going to end up a 10 carat or a 5 carat. Sorry for the rock licking here, but it's we're known as rock lickers because it has such an effect on on the uh, surface of, of this material. Should have been prepared with something other than saliva for this, but saliva does a great job and, and uh, all of us cutters <laughs> use it often. So that's that's the, the finished piece and uh, we'll uh, weigh it up and See what we've got. Oh. So let's check out the, the weight of this opal, what we ended up with. And we're just about 17 carats. Uh, you know, with the big divot in it, I'll be lucky to get a 7 or 8 carat out of the finished piece. Uh, you get the... So there's that big divot. So probably going to end up being, uh, it's real clear, so maybe a faceted stone, uh, a trillion. So I'll cut the table right through that divot. And, uh, you know, the down here at the bottom will be where the culet of the stone is. So we'll lose all this top piece. So it probably was a better piece of rough for a sample and it is going to be a cut stone, but uh, just nice to, to show the process. So uh, our first stone tonight, um, you know, all these stones, uh, I think everything here, all, yeah, everything here I've cut. Um, and the process pretty much the same for all of them. Uh, you just got to decide whether you're going to facet it or cab it or have to sculpt it because of those deep divots. Uh, first stone tonight uh, is a 12 carat. And this has a really nice rainbow of colors. Um, whoop. Uh, this is one I recut this week. You know, it just had a real sleepy side to it that, that just wasn't as brilliant as it should be. Get this in focus. So this is the back of it. Uh, get the gunk off it. When I photograph these stones, I use a wax on them that ends up with some residue I don't always get off. But anyway, um, really a beautiful opal. A unique shape you know you could make it into a ring or a pendant you know we prefer these as pendants they're just much safer um, from everyday wear and tear you know which these opals they're um, hydrophane so they do absorb water they do absorb whatever you put them in so you want to avoid uh, oils and hairsprays, uh, hand creams that we're probably using a lot of these days. Um, so just uh, keep them out of different chemicals and, and they'll give you a long, long good lifetime. You know, but really pretty stone. Uh, 1350 is the uh, price online. Uh, praise value is 1810 And tonight we're going to take 40% uh, off that. So you're going to get a really nice opal for... I don't know what that figures to, but uh, a pretty good discount at 40%. You probably done that on a seven, eight hundred dollar for a really, really nice Wheelow Opal. And our next one up is uh, kind of a cool stone. Uh, we have a real nice variety of things. Uh, you know, this one's cool because of its length and and being a, a marquee shape you don't see them this shape real often but really dramatic colors in it get the all right really nice greens and such a great play of color in it All the way through it. I mean, you know, 
you look at Australian opal, and usually they don't have color top to bottom like this. Usually they're not as thick as this. That thickness gives it durability, and just the colors are just remarkable. You know, this would be top crystal, is what the Australians would call this, uh, just because of the high transparency involved. So you can see that you can pretty much see right through it. I have a printed page. Uh, we probably can read through it, yeah. So that's what crystal opal is, just very high transparency. And the pieces from Wheelow uh, generally much higher crystalline character than, than stones from Australia. And nothing against Australian stones. So all you Australians, don't be <laughs> Texanists. <laughs> Bad messages. You know, this is just another opal, and they, they just, uh, Wheelow has just produced some really remarkable stones for the last uh, a little over 10 years, about 12 years now, you know, and this is one of them. You know, this is a uh, nine carat, almost uh, almost 10 carat stone. Um, so $890, less 40%, it's going to be a really remarkable opal for a really good price. <clears throat> this is another one that's... Uh, a recent cutting this week, um, if Michael bring it up. Oh, you're ready for that. <laughs> uh, you didn't want me to. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so this opal actually um, is reversed of what I originally planned for it. Actually, the opposite side of this stone was what I thought was the better half of it, but then I looked at the back of it and thought, well, oh, you know, it's actually got better color than than what should have been the front of the stone, a normal cab. You know, just has really big patches of color and just dramatic color. So this was actually intended to be the back of the stone. And this was the front of the stone, which both sides are beautiful. But I just like the pattern of this stone. So I, I cut uh, it into what is commonly known as a racetrack oval just because the the outer rim is just a continuous run like a like a racetrack they call it that I thought a racetrack that. oval no yeah it's that's what it is <laughs> it like yeah what? <laughs> yeah so that's the racetrack going around <laughs> so dr really dramatic play of color in this you know, that pattern is, is really a unique pattern and uh, just makes a beautiful opal this side. Again, here's the, here's the back side, what we typically would think of as, as the, the top side of this opal. Like I say, it's a beautiful side too, so you're really getting two opals in one. But just that huge patches of color that run across this and you know just the the amount of different colors involved just uh, kind of made me excited about about this side of the stone uh, Jeff we have a question yes um, just because you were talking about the racetracks um, <laughs> um, sort of um, related um, gentleman wants to know um, if he's got uh, some rough Wheelow Opal to work with, what's a good way to tell which one he should work on? I'm guessing cutting, is there a way? Um, How do you know if it's a... Well, you preform it uh, like we did in the video and uh, see what you got left, um, see what the color is. I mean, I if I buy it, I cut it. So, you know, I don't decide which one I'm going to cut. I just start cutting them. Or how do you yeah. decide which ones to pick? How you? Well, you just well, it's kind of a crapshoot, as you saw with that piece of rough. You know, if I had it to do over again, I wouldn't choose that piece of rough because I don't think it's going to be a real profit maker. It's not going to be dramatic color, you know. And, and that often in Wheelow Opal, um, 
have often said it, we need to mount the rough because, you know, maybe one out of three stones looked better in the rough than it did uh, when we cut it. Um, so uh, just like that one had beautiful color, but I don't think it's, it's going to really cut into a top quality stone. So it's kind of a crapshoot when you pick this, this material. Um, but it's reasonable enough that it's, it's not like you're investing a huge amount of money into it, uh, um, is how I look at it. And, you know, just, uh, start picking opals and you learn as you go, you know, but uh, one thing you do learn is you don't really know until you cut it. You know, I've got it down to where I have a pretty good idea what's worth buying. Um, but again, some of them just don't work out like you, you thought they would and others just really blow you away when you're done. So I don't know if that helps you, but if you have them ready, just cut them. Um, if you're looking at buying material, then, uh, you know, it, uh, just look for how dramatic the color is. Look for cracks in the, in the pieces, which I'll show you cracks in some later, uh, because some of this material does crack. And now that I mentioned it, I can show it to you now. Um, Maybe we can see it. This was going to be a great opal. You know, this is one that I'd cut before. You can see the crack there. I'd cut this one before a couple years ago. It actually was uh, the shape of a Christmas tree, and I was going to make it a Christmas tree because somebody had loved a Christmas tree. And it just had uh, just sparkles all over it like ornaments. But it cracked on me. Um, so I cut through the crack, which is what you do with problems like this. Um, if they're shallow, which it was in this one, you, you, you quickly take a sharp uh, um, tool uh, diamond bit and you cut through the crack all the way through it. And, and sometimes it works and, and you can retrieve what's left. Um, other times, in this case, I cut through the cracks and as soon as I cut it, it cracked again. You know, and this one cracked. You can see it running across right down the middle there and it runs all the way back through here. So this was a stone that, uh, this was probably a $3,000 opal. I mean, really dramatic color. I, maybe not quite that much, but... Uh, weighs 18 carats, and it would have been uh, 125, 150 a carat opal, but not to be, you know. And uh, I've learned to accept it, and, you know, it's a little disheartening, but you know it's going to happen. You know, it used to be that when I started, I was just so upset when these crack, you know, it just uh, took it out of me. But But now it's just something you expect and you know maybe one out of ten pieces will crack on me had two this week but uh and the other one was twice as big as this so uh can be a disappointing days but uh the rewards are in the next one you cut that happens during when you're cutting, right? yeah and it only happens when you're cutting it you know it happens during the process or shortly after you're done um, and once they're done cutting, they sit for a day. It just never happens again. You know, it's, it's uh, just a situation where there's stress in the material and, and it releases uh, with the crack. And um, I say once, once you're done and you, they've sat for a day, if they haven't cracked, they're not going to crack again. You know, it just, uh, just doesn't happen. Yeah. So where was I? What's next there, Mike? Uh, we did the marquee. Next one up is, oh, got a sale. That makes me feel good. It'll <laughs> make you feel good. There's a couple sales. Oh, a couple sales. Cool. Yeah, so I um, want to thank uh, Salvador. Um, he purchased the Cabochon Wheel Opal, the 12.13 carat. Okay, cool. The first one. Yes. And then Francesca um, purchased the... <clears throat> The racetrack one. Oh. The one that we were just talking about. Ah, cool. And well, I think I just heard another sale. And <laughs> thank you, Cynthia. She just purchased. Oh, I, I don't Cynthia. know if we even talked about this one yet. Um, we didn't talk about a pear shape one yet, did we? Uh, well, hey. <laughs> Cynthia knows how it works these days. She? <laughs> She's working the system. Uh, so thank you. Good everybody. for you. Oh, and, and with this, since we are, um, there was one question. Um, 
just to let everybody know that maybe he knew here um, about that while we do sell stones, we also do custom designs. Correct. Steve. We do custom designs. Yes. So, so any of these stones we sell tonight, we can uh, quote you on a custom design. You can send us pictures. Um, just give us an idea of what you're after, and, and we can give you a quote and, and how the process works. Uh, we discuss it with you and, and discuss it with our designer, Chris, and, and try and determine what you're after. Then we design something, send you renders of, of uh, what it'll look like. Um, and uh, give you a quote on a price. And if you like the idea, we go ahead and uh, produce a piece. It's typically two to three weeks at least. Uh, the whole process can be longer than that. You know, it's, uh, we do a lot of custom work, and we're pretty busy, but uh, that's, that's generally what it takes. Uh, I think the girls quote three or four weeks in the process. But, um, you know, it just depends on what's involved. So, All right, what's next? Okay, this is a cool stone. This is a piece that I was like the one we were just talking about. I I I, I was gonna um, set it up as a uh, piece of rough because the piece of rough was really cool looking piece. Uh, but finally, I decided to cut it, and and I'm glad I did because this one came out really nice. Um, it's a faceted stone, kind of a, a unique shape. Uh, it'll make a really a great ring or pendant uh, this one weighs 12 and a half carats uh, the colors are really dramatic in it also I mean the piece of rough I still remember it it was just a really cool piece and I it yeah I, I forgot Michael was the one who remembered it because I, I forgot that this is this came from that piece oh, it was awesome. yeah but online I think we have pictures yeah. of the piece of rough in in this piece um, but this one it, it, it was a good idea to cut it because it just came out so nice. You know, again, color front and back, you know, what, which side's better? <laughs> Who knows? You know, I mean, so much color and, you know, and most of these opals, they're just really clean. Occasionally you see little black spots in them. I don't think this has it. You know, there's just, uh, eh, there may be some, yeah, yeah, if you look close, you can, you know, these are not something you easily see visually in the piece, but but there's some little black, I, I don't know what they are in it, but it, it's commonly seen in, in these real transparent opals, but no effect on the, on the beauty or the brilliance of the stone. You're just not going to see it unless you really look close or do it under magnification. But... Colors are just really great in this piece. You know, this is where faceting really works out with these opals. You know, I had somebody this week try and tell me that, oh, you don't facet opals. You know, that's not the right thing to do with them. But I totally disagree. I almost would facet everything if I thought they'd come out like this. You know, because faceting sells. It uh, makes a unique look in this material. And I think it just really works. And as I'm a faceter and not really a cabber, well, I'm a cabber too because I do cab, but I started out as a faceter and, you know, it's really what I, I like to do. Um, and it, it works well in these opals. So this one, what's the specs on this one? So it's uh, another 12 carat 50. Uh, 1560 is the uh, price our price online so take 40 percent off that which is about 600 bucks so it's about a 900 hundred dollar stone for just a really really remarkable opal all right question yes um well just, i just was thinking about this one so this one would probably be good for a pendant right Size well, it. it'd, it'd make a really great pendant, yeah. yes. I mean, can you do a ring? I mean, it's a big spread, so it's a pretty good size stone because this measurement-wise is almost an inch long. Um, so it, it's pretty big. Not that we don't make rings that big. I'd love to see a ring, although, it's again, it's an opal. We 
prefer them in pendants just because it's safer. Um, so, yeah, it just make a dramatic pendant. You know, and, and the thing I find out from customers we sell to um, these opals, particularly with the size of them, you know, they get so many compliments on it. You know, people are, they tell me that the, they're just constantly, people ask, ask them about their pendant and, you know, want to take a look at it. So, you know, because of the size and the beauty of these opals, they do draw a lot of attention. So if you don't want attention, don't buy an opal. <laughs> um. You'll love it, though. Um, with the stone that you showed earlier with the crack, uh -huh. um, Gary wants to know, are you, would you just cut it in half and then pass it? The well, a lot of them you can, you know, a lot of these cracks that happen, um, you can just cut through the crack and you end up with two opals, you know, that the case with that one, and I see it often, you know, the, these cracks, they just run entirely around the opal, like, uh, it's just weird, you know, and it really makes it difficult to get much out of them. You know, there's probably a three or four carat stone in there, you know, but just the way the crack runs, you know, it, it it's a problem. But some of them, absolutely, you can, you know, it's, it's a crack, but you just end up with two good opals instead of one. Uh, but not the case with that one or the other one I did this week. You know, it's a weird crack. It's like a, like a plane that goes around the earth, you know, it leaves this trail around the earth and and that's how these are it goes all the way around the piece and you know the cracks are fairly deep so it's it's hard to get much yield out of it you know it's it's a pretty much a loss so no it's saw through the through the crack yeah all right okay next opal so this one's unique. You know, I, I picked stones, the show, that had unique character to them that you'd rarely see in opals. Um, you know, this one's just so red, you know, that it's uh, not your typical opal. You know, it, it's mostly just red flash. Of course, it has a lot of different uh, highlight colors, but but what you notice most is a red flash. In Australia, red is the most desired color. Uh, the highest price is is received for red opals. Um, and and currently, Australian material red is. Uh, not very available you know you look at a lot of the opals they're blues and greens primarily and not a whole lot of red but but this one what what red colors you know you catch that flash that runs across that and it's just like 80 percent of the stone is just a red flash you know and it's the camera's having a hard time adjusting to how bright the red is just kind of burns out the the picture but you know and you get those highlights you know a little green there and you see some purples and which th those are some colors you don't often see in opal violets and indigos and this is the back side of it you know again just solid opal all the way through and color all the way through it Hold it as it would look in a ring and hold it as it would look in a pendant. Okay, I'll, I'll drop do it. my best. So, whoop. Do you see the red flash in there? <laughs> anyway, need the tweezer. So, I'll give you an idea of the size. You know, and yeah, you can see the red flash without any direct light on it. Well, there is light, but... And as a ring... Okay. Thank you. You. You're welcome. Uh, so this one is, weighs a little over 15 carat. Um, you know, like I've said in the past, you know, 
when I dealt in just the Australian opal, which I never have been huge into Australian opal, but when I was getting Australian opals, the big ones were five carats. You know, now this Ethiopian material, the little ones are five carats. Um, and most of the materials, 10, 15, 20, 30 carat, I've got them up to 80 carat. So it's just a very large material, dramatic colors, you know, just a, a really a, a great buy um, in opals these days. So this one, 1270, less 40% with uh, fire 40. Next, Michael. Uh, this one, another kind of unique character. It's it's not easy to see there, but maybe we'll see it in the camera. Yeah, I mean, there, there's like an eye in it. You know, um, it's kind of the play of color is surface here. And then you look over here and there's like this eye that opens and you look inside the opal. There's a red flash in there. There's blue flash and green flash. Just kind of a cool piece. Maybe it's spooky. Yeah, it's <laughs> just like that unique character of that, that piece. <laughs> yep. Got a sale? Yes, too. That one sold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you could You thought it was it. unique, too, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, you can still talk about it. Yeah. Um, A cool, cool piece. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. And she said, don't, don't drop it. All right. <laughs> uh, well, I've got a friend that if you come to his booth at a show, he'll throw them on the case. You know, literally just throws them on top of the glass case, you know, trying to demonstrate that the durability of this material. I don't do that um, because anything can break. You throw a sapphire on a case and you can break it. But, but that's what he does to demonstrate the durability of these Ethiopian opals, which are considered to be the toughest of all the opals. They will take um, drops to um, hard surfaces better than other material. Don't try it. Uh, I had somebody drop one from a foot on a glass case and it took a chip out of it. So they're not impervious to damage. But, you know, the study GIA did where they dropped opals from 1.5 meters, which is, uh, what is that, about four and a half feet, um, onto concrete. And the only ones that survived were the Wheelow opals. You know, all the rest just cracked up. But um, not a recommended thing. And when you get your opals, don't open them over a tile floor. You know, over, over something soft. So if you do drop it, I won't. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. <laughs> uh, which, which I've done it too. I dropped uh, an opal of mine onto a tile floor and it, and it did chip it. You know, so tile is pretty merciless for all stones. You know, it's so when you do open them up over and over something soft or sit at a table and, and, and open them. You don't want to be dropping them three or four feet onto a tile floor. You know, my case was my ring was real heavy ring and all that extra force. You know, it just took a little chip out of it, but I did have to pull it out of the mounting and it never went back in that mounting because it, it ended up a smaller size, which we're working on now for a ring for me, which I'm without a ring at this time. Thank you for the purchase. Cool stone, really pretty greens in it. Uh, mostly green stone, but that eye is just, it's just a unique look. So 690 bucks, less 40%. Hmm, pretty cheap. Bargain. Yeah. yeah, bargain. They're all bargains tonight. They're the great opals and, you know, it's uh, only 40% off because I know I can buy more currently. You know, it, uh, you know, goods like this, uh, you know, I've got lots of stones, but this is some of the best of them, and I'm assuming I can replace it if we can ever travel again. Um, you know, that's something that we just had some bad news about our major trade show, uh, which is the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. Um, the first, the original show, uh, which actually starts after we're done with Tucson. I mean, there's 40, 50 shows out there currently and they run for they span almost a month um so 
me and Michael and Jeff go out there, and, and by the time we're leaving, this last show is just starting. So that's the the biggest uh, retail show out there, the original show, the Tucson TGMS, Tucson German Mineral Show. Um, they've already canceled uh, for February, so hopefully that doesn't go continue with all the other shows because it's a major show for us uh, uh you know half the dealers in the world are there at, at one time and uh we it's something we look forward to and you know i was upset i didn't think i was going to get to go anywhere after christmas on vacation i, I at least knew i was at the end of january i was going to get to go to tucson and do the thing i love but uh that's at risk now so but anyway um, on to the next stone. This is a really cool stone. Um, nice high dome to it um, and just beautiful colors into it. You know, this is a, an opal that uh, looks much like Australian counterpart, the, the milk white base um, with just really dramatic colors. You know, this is just such a beautiful stone. Again, colors throughout, front to back, no dead spots. You know, you could mount either side. I mean, this side's as pretty as the other. You know, this high dome adds to durability. It does make it a little more challenging to set, but uh, just because of the steep sides. Just takes a little longer prong to keep it into the mounting. But man, what a beauty. So this one weighs uh, a little over 12 carat again. A lot of 12 characters. Uh, 1790 uh, is the, the sale price online and 40% off that. Uh, so that's somewhere down in the $1,000 price range. But really, really an outstanding opal. You know, this is what people are used to as opal. You know, this is the, the kind of high-quality uh, white base opal that we would typically have got to know from Australia. But it is Wilo, Ethiopia, you know, and it is $1,000 rather than being Australian stone, a 12-carat Australian stone, four grand probably, yeah. And up next, this is a really pretty one also. A uh, unique shape and just has some really dramatic colors. Not sure what to call that pattern. But again, solid color throughout. There's a little divot. That's one of those divots that we just cut out of that preformed piece. There's a little black in it, but that comes out. You can see it's on the back of the stone. You know, what, what's on the back is generally accepted that uh, they're not typically perfect. If you look at most Australian stones, the back typically doesn't have color. And, and it will often be pretty rough. So we take some liberties with the back of these stones. And to cut that out, I'd have probably lost three carat to, to get that fully out. So it has no effect with what is the visible side of the stone. And it doesn't really, it doesn't show through. You know, some of those, when you put the divots in, you can see through the stone. But this one doesn't, you know, and wow, the colors. So it's a little more expensive stone, but the colors, you know, they, they are just so dramatic and uh, it weighs a little over 20 carat. Um, so higher price, bigger discount. So 3,600, uh, what's that end up? Uh, about $1,500 off that. So a little over two grand, but really such a... Uh, really a beautiful, beautiful opal. 
you know, hard to get much more vivid color out of an opal than you see here. Make a great pendant. Here's, whoop. Give you an idea size-wise. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, so you can see the light through it. Yeah. You can see the reflection, how, how crystal that is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Another crystal opal. You know, in Australia, crystal opal is what's considered the, the highest quality of the opals when you can get dramatic color in that clear base. You know, they do put a premium on it. Oh, something's sold. Yes. So we have... I think um, I must have priced these too cheap. <laughs> <laughs> New coupon code, FIRE10, 10% 10 <laughs> off. Um, Francesca purchased the uh, Cabochon Wheel Opal, the 12 carat one that we just showed. The big tall cab. Yes. Yeah, yeah it was cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, you'll love it. It's just really, really a beauty. And I was going to say, I was trying to figure out what this opal that you just showed looked like, the 20 carat. And I'm surprised, Michael, you didn't, you don't see what it looks like. That reminds me of you. What? <laughs> Hang on, let's see this. Get a close look. Does this make me? I don't know, it looks like a Hershey kiss. Like... Uh, okay, I guess from far. I was thinking guitar pick. Oh, guitar pick, okay. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Uh, not as much as I used to. <laughs> I thought that. I don't play guitar. So. Well, we keep him busy working, so no time for play. <laughs> uh, one question to fit in here real quick. Uh -huh. um, Erica wanted to know, are all your black wheelow opal naturally black and not smoked? Yes. And... That's a good segue, thank you. Because I, I have a piece of smoked opal here. Um, and it's something to be aware of. You know, if you're out there looking at opals, there are a lot of smoked opals out there and nobody's telling you that they're smoked. You know, they're just selling them as natural and you go, wow, that's just amazing. You know, how can I get such an opal for such a cheap price? You know, it's because they started out with a real junk piece of opal that wasn't good for anything else uh, they smoke treat them um, and it gives you colors that look like this which they're remarkably beautiful you know this was a stone that couldn't have been sold easily or for much money in its original state and they treat these and it just does an amazing job you know I, I you know, as you can see, this this I bought, when we get this, two years ago? A couple, couple years ago. You know, they do lose their color because if you look at the back of it, um, I don't know if it's from the light or whatever, it's a little more dull on the front, and we both remember it as being more vivid like this. You know, but if they're too good to be true, they're probably smoked opal. You know, you just don't get this kind of color out of a wheel of opal. So if it's hydrophane, has this kind of color, you know, and hydrophane, you can kind of feel it being sticky is a way to detect hydrophane. Or if you put a little drop of water on it, it'll just suck it up. You know, so you see a wheel of that, that looks this kind of color. It's just not real because you just don't, uh, you don't see this, this dramatic a color. You know, and I was wondering... You know, if these, uh, if you look at them, sometimes you catch the light right and you'll see uh, uh, almost the outer edge being darker than, than the rest of the opal. 
And I think that's because, you know, these smoke treatments are, they don't go all the way through it. They're more surface, I believe is true. And, and trying to ID smoked opal is, is not, not easy, you know, but you know that you'll never get a wheel of opal that looks this black and looks this vivid a color. They just don't exist. And we've got some that are close later in the show, but not like this. So these are really, really cheap, typically. You know, they're 20 bucks a carat. You know, I just bought this one as a sample. So that, that's the, the smoked opal. Um, so anything we have that's uh, semi-black or black will be uh, completely natural, no smoke involved. <clears throat> uh, what's what's next one there, Mike? All right. Another unique shape because of how the rough was. Uh, but it'll make an a interesting pendant. It's got a nice curved surface that'll show real well as a pendant. Got my camera in there, Mike. So really beautiful flashes of color. Another crystal opal, just very, very transparent. And another shout out to one of our regulars, uh, Eileen in West Virginia, I think. And Kevin. So another one that uh, color throughout the stone. And just very dramatic. You know, this is, uh, what is it? Just a little over 10 carat. Uh, 1250 is the sale price online. So 40% off with uh, Fire 40. This is so transparent. It's amazing that, that you can get this kind of color out of such, such transparency. It's almost glass clear. You know, it's another characteristic that uh, can be enhanced. Uh, these clear stones, um, We've done it ourselves, uh, where you black back these. Let me show you how that works. Huh? Do you have a white background? White background. I don't know if that would show up better. Maybe. Yeah. I played with this before, so there's a little black on the back now. So I, I've got a dry erase marker, black, that, it's almost dry. So um, if you're looking at a piece of jewelry and the back is totally enclosed with a wheel of opal, uh, you can have a fairly good idea that uh, it may be the back, either the mounting or the back of the stone maybe blackened because it it just amplifies the the color of of the opal significantly often it'll turn them a little more blue looking you know so if it's divulged this is uh, something that that's acceptable you know but you need to be told that the the piece is is blacked on the back you know, and if I could get the black a little more solid, it would even do more for it. So again, if, if the mounting's closed and you can't see the back of it, you assume that there's some type of darkening of the back of the opal to enhance the color. Um, we've kind of 
quit doing it, but there are some opals um, that it does really dramatic things for and, and really makes them beautiful. So it's your choice whether you want a black back and opal. It only works on the, the higher transparent material, um, but can have a significant effect on it. So I'm not sure. Well, let's do it to this one. And my pen was a little... You got any other pen for me? Yeah, I left this open and it's getting dry. Look, you have one? Uh, I don't see one. There was one in this under here. Thanks. Not that we're pushing you to do this, just trying to show you what, what is often done and can be done and whether it's right or is up to you. But you should have the choice, not be sold something that it's been done to and you don't know about it. So you can kind of see how it. Intensifies the colors and again, it, it makes the body color look more blue. So. So one other enhancement that's that's done to these opals. Yeah. The dry erase just wipes right off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the dry erase doesn't enter this opal for some reason and comes right off. But if you do it in a mounting, you you'd probably do it with some kind of uh um, enamel, uh something more permanent. You know, sometimes it's a benefit if you if you close the back of a mounting, uh, you can enamel the the metal underneath the stone. It has less of an effect, but it does have a slight effect on it. Yeah. All right, up next, this one I really love the blue colors that are in it. You know, you don't see this. Uh, this kind of blue in an opal very often. And there you can you can see the honeycomb, you know, that as we call it in, in Wheelos on the end there. The honeycomb pattern um, is typically where you see the most intense dramatic colors. Um, honeycomb, they just kind of, the colors just show up through those uh, honeycomb patterns. You know, you can see the effect of the honeycomb running lengthwise there, and on the end of it, you'll see the honeycomb as it appears like a honeycomb, you know. And and when you look straight down them, the colors just show up directly through each of those honeycombs. Kind of a cool pattern. Whoop. And there's those blues. Yeah. Uh, too many opals. I see that intense blue coming out of. You can see how the honeycomb pattern works, that those flashes of color just show right through each of the individual honeycomb. They're, you know, kind of surrounded by the honeycomb. Yeah. And this is completely natural. And this is completely natural. This is probably a semi-black also. You know, semi-black, uh, in Australia, blacks are typically opaque um, in intense black color. The semi-blacks are usually more transparent um, and just have a, a darker body color. You know, anything from gray to, to darker black 
uh, would be con- could be considered in a semi-black. And when you get the black opals, it's just remarkable how much money they bring. I mean, literally thousands, can be 10,000 a carat for some really fine blacks. So this, again, color everywhere. I mean, there's not a bad side to this opal. 1990 uh, weighs 16.4 carats. Yeah, just really unreal. Kind of mesmerizing. That's where there's some Marvel. <laughs> What's a Marvel movie with, I don't know, something with some kind of stone where they move it around and it's green. Or maybe it's Transformers. I don't know, one of the two. But just that, that's a cool color. Okay. Is that an 80s movie? No. <laughs> Are you sure that that hair? Okay. Like right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you remember the 80s. You're a 90s, 90s guy, right? Um, okay, boys. <laughs> <laughs> A couple questions uh-huh. since we've cut in here. Um, so one thing, I guess, I, you kind of talked about it. Um, so are the black or darker weevil opals more valuable? Well, the, you know, we've got some darker ones that aren't in the show tonight. <clears throat> they just, it's hard to photograph the colors, and, and they're generally not the most beautiful of the wheel opals. Yeah, it's rare to see a, a true black wheel opal that the colors are intense enough um, that I'm excited about them, you know. Uh, the semi blacks that we're we've shown you, and, and we're going to show a few more. <clears throat> Those really have dramatic color, but the really dark ones I've cut <clears throat> that are really black material uh, have not shown the intensity of color uh, that does much for me. So the the blacks from Willow are typically just not that exciting. <clears throat> but I think we maybe have a. Another semi-black coming up here, Mike. Oh, you have another question, Jeff? Yeah, Sorry. one more. This is, uh, so a gentleman named Tim. Um, so his dad was a gem dealer back in the 80s. So this is going to age you here. He used to love a catalog. He wants to know if you ever saw it, but it's called. he thinks it's called Mother of Pearl. It was like a color what? catalog print that he used to look through. It was called Mother of Pearl? I think that's... Yeah, so the catalog was called Mother of Pearl. Uh, but no. Because he used to deal way back in the day. Gems. Yeah, it was around in the 80s. <laughs> um, there was a gentleman down in Tennessee that did a... I don't know what he called it, but he did a newspaper and sold uh, uh, stones through the paper. Uh I don't think I can remember his name, but he was in Danville, Tennessee, I think. You know, I sold him a few stones once that he made big money on, and I didn't make much money on them. But maybe he was smarter than I was at the time. Um, but no, I'm not sure. You know, so I don't know who the dealer that you're related to. I don't know if I would know him, but I in, in the 80s, I was in the business, so... Um, and I did travel a lot around the Midwest, so I knew a lot of the dealers. Last question. Um, is crystal coating wise to do on Wheel of Opals? What's that? I don't know. You'll have to tell me what crystal coating? That's what he said. Uh, Gary, what is it? Yeah, I don't know of any coating that's done to Opals. Sometimes I'd like to find something that would uh, coat them to prevent the the hydrophane character of sucking up uh, oils and stuff, but uh, I don't know of anything that's done to coat uh, uh, the Wheelow Opals at this time. Yeah. All right. Okay, next up. 
Here's a semi-black that just has color that just blows me away. I mean, the intensity of the color. This is what you expect out of black opal because, you know, why black opals are so valuable is because the vivid flashes of color you get out of them. And that's what this this opal has, um, what you would expect from a black opal. The intensity of colors is second to none. You know, even uh, black opals from Australia, I mean, the intensity of color would rarely ever outshine these. There's one of the divots, you know, that I just kept in to the piece because, again, you take that out and you lose half this opal. But the color play shows in the divot. And you get a stone that uh, weighs uh, almost 15 carats. So it's a nice big piece with just amazing, amazing colors. You know, it's, it's probably uh, only one other stone in, in this show that looks real similar to this that'll have this dramatic of, of play of color. You know, all of them are beautiful, but but these are really, uh, really pretty remarkable. Yeah, definitely a special piece. So would you call that uh, honeycomb as well, or? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't have a as distinctive honeycomb pattern. Uh, yeah. um, but it, if you, it does have... Uh, an indistinct honeycomb pattern that it is. It's basically a honeycomb pattern. You know, and the honeycomb are, are what you see the most intense colors come out of. Not sure why that is, but uh, it just generally is true. So this one's 3280, and again, 40% off that, and, and this is a, really a spectacular stone. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why we don't call this black, but I'm just going with the way the Australians work with it. And, um, you know, so I'm calling it a semi-black. Again, it's a, a pretty much a, a crystal semi-black opal because it is has high transparency also, although it's hard to see it with all that play of color. Can you show the size of this? much the same size as the others we've looked at. And the colors, Shh. this camera doesn't show those colors very well. No, it's, well, need to put some light on it. Too. But anyway, it's really, really a beauty. And for a little break, uh, I'm going to show you something that uh, Michael has purchased for his website, uh, mineralmike.com, which we typically show some of uh, his pieces, but we don't uh, really have anything on the show tonight. But uh, he just got these today. Or was it yesterday? Yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. This is a bag of uh, peridot crystals from Pakistan. Um, you know, these are really exceptional crystals. Uh, it, it's not typical to see Pakistan peridot or any peridot showing a crystal shape, uh, but these have real nice crystal formation. Really great colors. Get that white out here. And for uh, a natural crystal, they have nice transparency. You know, if they were any clearer, we'd be cutting them up and making faceted stones out of them. But um, these do have enough imperfection that they're really only useful as, as crystal specimens. But really beautiful termination. And for peridot, you just, you just don't see this kind of termination in, in peridot rough. 
So this comes from Pakistan. They're mined 11,000 feet up in the Himalayas. And we do facet quite a few peridots. I wish I could get more of it, but um, I, I cut as much as I can of it because it's really the most beautiful peridot on the planet. So these are available on mineralmike.com or will be shortly. He doesn't have them up yet. Here's a big piece. Again, nice full termination. Great color flower. Yeah, the color is just remarkable. And this is a twin. There's a little crystal growing next to this. I think it's actually a triplet. <laughs> I don't know. The, that's not the real name, but it's got another crystal here off to the side. So two little baby crystals. Did you put that to like a little pendant? Yeah. Like pendant oh, we've done quite a few. Yeah, and, and some of these will end up as pendants because they, they just just make a, a really nice looking piece. You know, the color is dramatic and these crystal tips are just really beautiful. So we'll be seeing these online on Mineral Mike soon and we'll see some of them mounted as pendants. Yeah, I don't know how many, I got like 30 or something. Yeah, about 30 pieces in here. You know, I haven't seen this many nice crystals since the early 90s when the Pakistan material originally was discovered. All right, next piece. Oh, whoop, you question? Or yeah, just as okay. we cut in real. Oh, All well, right. can we have a big sale uh, boom? Oh, let me see. Let's... There it is. <laughs> Make me smile. Uh, so Eileen picked up the 9.89 uh, carat marquee opal. That was nice. Oh, oh, I thought that sold. Yeah, that's 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 really nice. They're all really nice, but the you know I like the shape of that. It'll make a nice piece. You know, it's that long length to width um is just so easy to make a pretty looking piece out of it you don't have to do much to it and just looks unique just because of the the shape of the, of the opal you know we've done a lot of uh different material like aquamarines and you know it's just so easy to make them look different just because of that long length the width uh just makes something pleasing no matter what you do to them so thanks eileen One more question. We'll turn okay, here. sure. Um, Ken wants to know, Australian opals are sometimes fossils and clams, etc. Do Ethiopian ever come the same way? Uh, no, but yes. We don't get clams and we don't get uh, uh, different shell shapes. Um, and occasionally you'll see a full crab shape uh, in opal. But what we do get, I don't have it here tonight. I meant accessible. to. Huh? Is it accessible? Um, I'm not exactly sure. It, you know, it's in a box that's on the counter there in a, in a, a regular shipping box. We'll, we'll see if we have it. Mike will take a look. It, uh, back on the table, just a shipping, top shipping box. Uh, we have what's called a limb cast. You know, because as I mentioned uh, when we were preforming, that uh, much of this material <clears throat> is filling in a vacancy left by some organic material that that uh, um, deteriorated and and left just an open void in the ground. Um, so a lot of them are um, limb casts. They could be a root or a uh, just actually a piece of limb that fell and was buried in the in the ground and which turned to rock and and then left this imprint of either a limb or a root um, so you do see the actual limb shape of this and we have a real nice piece which we've shown in the past any luck mike 
Uh, no, I didn't find the one you were looking for, but I found okay. another. Found a little one? Yeah. Yeah. So here's, this is a smaller version of the one we were looking for. Um, you know, get the... So this is a limb cast. You know, it looks the shape of a limb, and if you look at the surface, the the surface of the limb kind of shows up in in the piece. We've got a bigger piece, which we've shown in the past. You've seen it. Um, so, so that's as close to a, a fossil. I guess it kind of is a fossil. Yeah, same as same. This is the same thing that that happens to the uh, shells that you're talking about. But I, I, you know, where these are found, it it pro it wasn't a sea, so you know you don't get the shells. Or like in Nevada, the honeycombs they find because it was an ancient forest. The oh, in Nevada. yeah, yeah. So you get uh, honeycomb in Nevada. Um, so depending on what the nature was around uh, in the areas, what what opal can can form and, and fill the shape of. And we have, uh, I think there's a piece in here that we're going to show tonight that actually has a root fiber in it. So occasionally you do find um, organic material within these opals. And I, I know one of these, I think maybe it was, uh, I'll see if I can find it and, and show you the actual root fiber uh, that's left within, within uh, the opal. That it for questions there, Jeff? Oh, what, yes, was, for now. what was the sale? Huh? Did we talk about what the sale was? Yeah, Eileen. Oh, yeah. oh that was Eileen's. Okay. Yeah. Again, thanks, Eileen. Okay, next one up. Next one, Michael. Okay. Another, not quite dark enough to be a semi-black, but it did take it on a little shade darker color. You know, and again, has those dramatic flashes in it. And that is really a, a dramatic pattern. It's like cherry black, I think. Oh. Yeah, looks good on both, yeah. And this is almost what Australians would call harlequin pattern. They'd give me a hard time saying that, but but this is real close to what harlequin pattern is. And and that's what they consider the best pattern in in Australian opal. Again, just uh, really dramatic colors, just throughout, just solid, no dead areas. Well, there's one. Uh, little dead area there on the back. <laughs> so I lied. But it is pretty much on the back, you know. But that's an amazing opal also. You know, this one weighs just under 19 carat. 1990 is the the price online and 40% uh, off that. So that's uh, down to like 1200 bucks. You know, but really a dramatic opal for the price. Make a great pendant. All right, what's next there, Mike? This has roots in it. We'll see if we can see them or not. They're not very dramatic, but um, the color is dramatic on this. This opal weighs 11.45 carat. Again, another top crystal opal, just high transparency. And if you look close, just off to the side there, those are some kind of root 
uh, that's that the opal formed around. If you look close at them, you can kind of see little root hairs coming off them and, you know, very difficult to see. Again, really dramatic colors, those indigos and violets. Yeah, I never quite knew exactly what indigo was till I started looking at these opals and It's the color between blue, indigo, and violet in Roy G. Biv in the colors of the rainbow. Who? Roy G. Biv. <laughs> you don't know him? Is he a customer? Red, orange, yellow, blue, <laughs> right. <laughs> green, blue, indigo, and violet. Yeah. So really pretty opal. Um, what was it? Thirteen seventy is uh, online price. Forty percent off that with Fire Forty. Nice cap, Steve. Thanks, Mike. And up next, is this. Uh, this is the one Michael really likes. Oh, I do. Yes. yes. It's his kind of fire. Well, it's, it's, I don't know. Kind it, of. It, pin fire? It's different. It's just so intense. Yeah. It looks like little LEDs in there. Yes, it does. Yeah. It's a Christmas one. <laughs> driving down the street and it's raining you look at the street lights <laughs> <laughs> wow. okay it's <laughs> <way out there>. <laughs> <laughs> like reflection off of the street yeah. Okay. yeah it's not quite your pin fire but it's close oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Michael likes those real tight fine patterns in opal when we're looking at rough, he gets all those. I just look at it and go, oh, this is a Michael stone. But that's really a beauty. 990 is the, the price online, 40% uh, off that. So you're down 400 bucks. So it's uh, basically a $600 stone. And it weighs just a little over eight carats. different colors in this you know i uh, don't usually see such dramatic yellows uh, not too often greens and reds are most common but this really has dramatic yellow and a few other colors Uh -huh. um, remind everybody that uh, all the other opals are also 30% off. Oh, okay. Yeah, so when you go on more gems, uh, you're going to see another 80 opals, and they're all on sale. You know, they're 30% they're off, and there are a lot of great stones in there. I've spent the uh, last two weeks uh, putting a lot of new things on, and so you'll you'll see a lot of a lot of opals you haven't seen before on the site uh, currently, and they're all thirty percent off, um, forty percent off on the ones we're showing tonight. But everything else is thirty percent off. So you'll have time to take a look there and see if there's anything that you find of interest, because that'll go on for at least the next couple of weeks. Coupon code is opal thirty. Yep. Coupon code is opal thirty. Opal 30, it'll be that coupon code. Is that, uh, did you put that on the site? Because we can. Yes. Oh, uh, the, the um, Opal 30 to, coupon code. Yeah, uh, did I put it on the site? No, but well, we will. Okay. 
So if you forget it, we'll is. we'll get it on there. And uh, yeah, yeah, nobody else has that offer yet. But if you're watching tonight, you're exclusive, at least till tomorrow. <laughs> so up next, uh, this one I just cut this week. Um, another crystal opal with dramatic play of color, just huge flashes of color. Oh, nice shield shape. Kind of a double cab. Uh, I don't know which side's better, maybe this side. But just really transparent. All right, next one, Mike. So this one was kind of a little experiment uh, for me. Um, this. Oh, not sure why, but uh, well, it's quicker. You know, it's something that if you could learn to do it quickly you know for these freeform shapes you don't have to quite worry about how the facets match up and you know whether they're perfectly shaped or not uh, because it is a unusual shape you know it doesn't necessarily uh, need to be perfection um, but it was just fun experimenting with it and you know cutting it by hand I'd forgot I'd done it and I looked at it and I think you told me. Did you tell me I did this one by hand? I Oh I, no, I, I yeah. think you showed me and it was yeah. remarkable that you were able to pull that off. Yeah, that kinda of surprises me. Truly handcrafted, huh? Truly handcrafted. Yeah. Hand facets. You still use the lap flat lap though, right? Yeah, just on a flat lap. Yeah, just don't glue it up and connect it to the machine. Just get all the schmutz off it. A whole lot of dinging going on. So really pretty colors, you know, unique piece. You know, it's, uh, like they said, completely handcrafted. So this one weighs 16 carat, uh, 1930s regular price and 40% off that with Fire 40. Again, it's crystal opal, uh, has high transparency and just really, really beautiful color. Whoop. So we have a sale. Yes, got a couple um, of them. Those okay, came in. cool. Um, Daniel just purchased the one we showed before this, um, the 720 Shield Crystal Opal. Just oh, right okay. before the stone. The pear shape? Uh, no. Oh, 720. Oh, 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 the one I just cut. Yes. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. And then Shannon just purchased a stone that we didn't have on the show like we talked about was 30 percent off all the rest oh okay this was um one that you faceted it was a uh, 3.70 carat um we little that's like kind of a square fat it almost looks like a princess type cut probably don't um emerald cut faceted emerald cut uh, or? i guess it could be emerald 
yeah. square. Uh, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> There's too many them. of them. It's yeah, a cool. Yeah. One. I, I know. I, I know. I like. I think I uh, posted it early, earlier. You know, to a Facebook oh, that group square too. one. Yeah. Oh, with the uh, has kind of yes linear exactly. color yeah. bars. Yes, that's a really great opal. You know, I almost I didn't want to put that on because it would make such a great men's ring. You know, and I, I, if I had time to make it up, it wouldn't have been available to you because that's the kind of stone that uh, in a gents ring. I mean, it just sells up so quick. You know, but. It's hard to hard to set up all these stones. So, uh, to your benefit, uh, it's a great great opal. Thank you. She's sneaking into the hidden stash now. Huh? <laughs> Good job. <laughs> all right. Up next is another semi black. Uh, this one just finished uh, this week. And this one, this was supposed to be the front and still could be, but the backside is phew, pretty hot colors. Man. Looks like a black, doesn't it, Mike? Yeah, it looks like a smoke. We sure this is not smoked? Not smoked. <laughs> this one is not smoked, you know, even though it almost looks like it. Yeah, that's a pretty hot color. Bit of an odd shape, but, uh, you know, when you're cutting these stones with such great color, it's hard to waste anything. So you just cut, cut till it's clean and hopefully you can get a shape that's usable. Because, man, the colors in this, just amazing. Pretty good polish like too. The, the split pattern there. Yeah, yeah, like it's a two stones you put together, uh, like a doublet. Not a doublet though. What is a doublet? Uh, you'll see it often in opals. A doublet is uh, usually a thinner piece of opal that probably wouldn't stand up on its own. So they typically put iron stone on the back, you know, like the material we cut off this stone. In Australia, it's iron stone. It's much harder. Um, and, and they'll leave it on the back um, either as a natural doublet, which has iron stone backing and then a thin piece of opal on the top. Uh, that's what a doublet is. Uh, it's only part opal. Then there's triplets, which are very thin piece of opal. Uh, that they put um, um, black onyx on the back of it to highlight that color. And then they put a quartz, piece of clear quartz across the top. That's a triplet. This is one solid piece of opal, natural, semi-black, almost black. Really, really great stone. Uh, 1850 is the price, weighs 12.72 carats, and 40% off with fire 40. Even the size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's. There are a lot of 12 carat ones. Yeah, yeah, 12 carat is, should have been the 12 carat show. <laughs> Uh, question. Yeah, so we talked about earlier how we do custom designs. Um, this gentleman wants to know, do you ever do like custom cuts? Well, it's hard, you know, because I, sometimes, you know, if the material's right and I can do it, you know, I'm just not going to waste material to to get somebody's custom cut. You know, a lot of times people, you know, I worry that they're not, willing to pay the extra you know sometimes you do a custom cut and instead of getting you know 40 percent yield out of it you get 20 percent yield out of the piece of material um, you know there are materials that are commonly available um, that you can do a custom cut 
you know, if you have a cut that you would like, um, you let us know, and if something works out that we can custom cut it. I'm just not going to take a, a rare piece of material and just waste it to get a cut. You know, that's uh, just sacrilege to me. You know, you just got to, um, your, your whole goal as a cutter is to make the best use out of that piece of rough and, and get the most you can out of it, uh, display what nature has given you and, and get the, the biggest, most impressive piece out of it. So custom cutting is just doesn't work that way often, you know, but we'll try and do it if we can. So. Probably not the answer you want, but <laughs> it's the answer I give. I get that request a lot, and a lot of times I don't fulfill it. You know, it's just a, an extra pressure to a cutter having to produce something um, that wasn't meant to be. You know, it's uh, we try and try and uh, get the most out of a piece and. And cutting to somebody's desires is not usually going to do that. Yeah. Okay. And up next, after that rare beauty, here's a monster. You know, this is, uh, I mean, it doesn't weigh the most of any stone we have, but it's just a huge piece. You know, it's a big, big face because it's not cut very, very deep. It's too big for the screen, you know, but really, really nice color. This is another piece. It's got some indentations on the back, which we now know where those came from. Can you show us the size uh, before I go on? So, oh, sure. Just to give an idea. So, you know, big, wow, big pendant. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't look like yeah. that in the picture. Oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a big piece. Whoop. So make a really nice big pendant. Again, it's a crystalline material. Oh, there we go. We get on the screen. So I went and I, I smoothed these divots out a little more because they were showing through the front. So I got rid of the edges around the outer perimeter. I rounded those off more, so so it's difficult to see them through the piece now. If we get the light right, I'm sure there maybe there you can start to see a little bit of the reflection of them, but uh, it, it really worked well that they really don't show up much at all. So just a big, big piece. I mean, this measures... Uh, uh, 44 millimeters so it's almost it is an inch and a half long and over an inch wide so if you're looking for something big and noticeable when you wear it this would be a great piece And a lot of violets and indigos, blues, full rainbow. That'll be an easy piece to make something beautiful out of. Uh, so it's 5875 um, and uh, 40 percent off that takes it down 2400 bucks something like that um, how big do you think the piece of rough was that you got that from oh think back um, don't remember it was well it was probably 150 carats you know, the general yield on this material um, is about a third. So, you know, a 60 carat piece of rough gets you a 20 carat is, is typical. So, 
sometimes much worse. You know, the piece we cut today, 17 carat from 44. So that's about right. It'd be 34, a little better than a third we got out of that piece. But it's not cut. It's actually going to end up uh, maybe a sixth. You know, if we get an 8 carat out of a 44 carat piece of rough, you know, not, not real good yield, but uh, typically about 30, 30% is, is typical what, what will yield out of this material. Uh, let's see. Okay, Jeffrey, next one's for you. Uh, it's a sailboat. <laughs> if anybody's been around for our shows, which many of you have, uh, we've talked about sailboats before, and this is one of the best sailboats I've I've ever cut. Again, crystalline material, and just really, really large patterns of color, dramatic colors, both sides, all sides. Sorry about that. get the goop off it that's better really good polish great colors doesn't have to be a sailboat but it sure would work well as one I should have done the uh, like Eileen said had you sailing in in the beginning uh. the sailboat <laughs> Sail away. <laughs> na, 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 na. Oh, Sing it. <laughs> oh, it's turning into karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> cool colors. Really, really great. So what was the specs on this one? Uh, so it's 22.22 carats. And one thing about weight on these, weights vary. Um, because they're hydrophane, depending on the humidity, uh, these can vary by, oh, up to probably half a carat. You know, the more humid it is, the heavier they are. Uh, as you get into winter, they'll be lighter. So these weights are approximate, you know. This is what I weighted as today. Uh, some of the stones that I've worked on this week uh, definitely weighed a little more this week than they did when I originally weighed them. You know, that'll probably change. We get into January, they'll be back down and weighed a little bit. We know how weight varies, unfortunately. Really, really a beauty. And I think a perfect sale. Hmm. Okay, and next. There's that honeycomb pattern. This one I just did a recut on. Uh, this had a pointed crown, but sometimes that honeycomb pattern produces a gray look to it. And so I, I cut it back, cut off probably a couple of carats off it, but it was well worth doing because, man, the colors. You don't see them like this very often. Just so many different color patterns in it. And the color is just so dramatic. Doesn't get better than this. Except the last 19 opals we showed. They were all. <laughs> but this, this is really, really a, an amazing stone. 
Even the back of it has a huge red flash like one we showed you earlier. Get all the... So the faceting on this down, it has little effect. Some of them, it, it has more of an effect on the stone. Just makes it, gives it a unique look, though. It's a little off center there, Steve. <laughs> it's getting late in the show. I'm having a hard time here. Get myself centered. But that's pretty special rock. Yeah. I can't recall better. How would you uh, set this one? What do you recommend? Well, I mean, it'd be nice to set it that you could see both sides. You know, and we've done pendants like that where actually they were reversible, although this is the the right side but being able to see that red flash on the back of it would be cool too so i have an, at least a window open in the back of it that the wearer could could see the beauty of both sides of this opal but no question that's that's the uh there's a word for that the the winner part of it uh that's the go piece, or this is the show piece, or. Pretty special. Uh, this one weighs 13 and a half carat. Um, is the most expensive piece of the show, but rightfully so. $5,400 and 40% off with fire. 40. Fire 40. Fire 40. Don't forget that uh, all the opals uh, on our website, moregems.com, uh, are 30% off uh, any, any you would choose off the site. Just the wheel of opals, um, but uh, all of them 30% off. And what we've shown you tonight, 40% off um, with Fire 40. Any other questions there, Jeff? Actually, it's a um, couple sales. A couple we sales. Some. Well, yeah. even better. Sales and questions. Yes. yes. So someone, you know, was uh, listening to you the first time about 30% off the other opals. So had two sa sales um, from two opals not on the show. Oh, okay. So they're sneaking in there. Um, Erica purchased a um, black cabochon 2.48 carrot yeah oh sorry carrie <laughs> that was for carrie huh no no she, she liked it yeah yeah it, was it wasn't carrie that ordered it huh no, carrie you should have just ordered it you know, don't listen to michael and just <laughs> yeah, that's a cool piece. oh well michael's in trouble you can you can stay with me tonight mike <laughs> Um, the other one that sold, um, Tammy purchased, I don't think this was, one was on the show, but it's an 8.9 carat pear shape, brilliant cut opal. Really? Yep. Looks not cool. Not sure which one that is, but thanks. The colors are yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's lots of great opals on, on uh, from not the ones that were in the show. There's there's lots of them on there. I had a hard time deciding what to pick. I tried to pick some variety and uh, some different patterns and different types of opals, but uh, there's many, many 
on there. There's a hundred opals on the site, and there's really a lot of great ones. And if you're in the area, there's uh, I have another hundred opals at least that uh, are not on the site. Um, hopefully, eventually, I'll get them on, but uh, just takes a lot of time to to do that and. And uh, I spent a lot of time these last couple of weeks doing it. I'm tired of doing it, so I don't know anymore I'll get on there or not. But uh, they need to all be on there because there's so many great opals that we've cut over the last, uh, been cutting them since 2012. And we've accumulated a, a pretty uh, broad selection of opal. And, and that's why we've featured them tonight and time to move a few of them. Uh, Hopefully we'll see our supplier early next year and and be able to get some more opals while they're available. Uh, you just never know when the supply is going to run out. Um, like many things, it's there one day and then uh, not available the next, or things can affect the price. You know, there's been issues in Ethiopia um, that have affected uh, particularly the emeralds that come from there and the, the sapphires, which are in the south of the country. Not sure what's been going on, but it has uh, the problems have uh, stopped the uh, supply of those stones. Uh, but the area these come from haven't been affected and, and still currently available. And we hope it will continue because they're really just exceptional opals. You know, they're they're as fine as the world has to offer. Um, and uh, we're just really happy to to be able to offer these to you tonight. Um, so, all right, folks. Uh, yeah, is there questions, any other oh, questions? Oh, that was the last one. That was the last opal for today. Okay, I got some questions. Oh, we got some questions. Yes, all right. I didn't know that was the last one. Thought right. I was going to be able to slip out of here and get to sleep, but uh, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> um, yes. So, okay. um, so earlier we talked about you were asking about the crystal coating. Yeah. So he just said he has heard that they're, they sometimes put coating on like amylite to protect it. Oh, yes. Huh? Crist no, that's crystalline. Uh, what do they put on? What did they say to put on the... I can't remember, but I, yeah, whatever that, it sounded like what that guy was talking about. I can't remember that. But... Yeah, well, they do... Yeah, they... they generally a different situation where it's not the material is not so transparent i mean it's real surface color uh, so it doesn't affect the look of it where i think it might affect the look of the opal um, not sure but um, you know i've always looked at uh, coatings um, be nice to be i think it'd be nice to be able to coat them so you don't have to worry about the oils situation um, but uh, to my knowledge there's nothing for them as of yet so, and whether it be accepted, you know, although in the amylite it has been, but most people don't know that they do have a, a treatment on them to protect them. You know, and amylite is a really beautiful stone, and um, I, I do buy amylite occasionally. You know, I appreciate the, the beauty it has, just like an opal, you know, same kind of color as the opal, different uh, way that uh, they're produced, but. Uh, um, you know, amylite is a, another really, really nice stone. I think I only have one on our site at the moment. Okay. Um, also, we just got a sale. Uh, I want to thank Cheryl. Thanks, she actually, Cheryl. Um, while people, while we've talked about the other gemstones of opal, she purchased um, an oval cabochon opal pendant. Oh, okay. So you also have jewelry. Yeah. With the opal set already. Yeah, we ha we do set some up. We need more. You know, we've done uh, had real good success at selling mounted pieces, but again, there's just so little time available, and we're doing custom work so much it's hard to get stock done. You know, if I had my choice, all these stones would not be sold loose; they'd be sold mounted. Um, but there's only so much time in the day, and I cut faster than we can produce jewelry, so. Um, they are available to you cut or we'll design a piece as we've discussed. Um, another question, kind of off opal topic. Do you, have you ever worked with Labdorite? Labradorite? Labradorite, yeah. Ye yes. Um, mostly 
specimens. Uh, Mineral Mike has Labradorite specimens. Um, I occasionally have cut, and I think we, I don't know if we still have any pendants with Labradorite. Yeah, we have some sterling silver pieces uh, that may, we may still have some with Labradorite. Uh, interesting material. It's not, well, it's not fastenable. It's not, uh, um, you know, it, it has a lot of cracks in it. So it, it's, it's not something that I do cabochons of it, but uh, we do buy it occasionally. A lot of it's directional too. Yeah, real directional color. Yeah. You know, I have something similar. I have uh, uh, moonstones. Again, you know, the color is just so directional that you have to cut it exactly right, and only when you catch the light right, it only has one direction that it will flash its color to you. Um, so, you know, a um, little limiting from that, but Labradorite's beautiful. I think it's for Mike, it's one of his best selling. Um, you know, they're cut in slabs and they just show such dramatic color that uh, very saleable for him. All right. Um, someone asked, um, this is, I think you may have mentioned it, um, the meaning of keystone. The meaning of keystone I don't know if you in said the that. trade? Yeah, I'm guessing. I, I think you said something earlier about when you were talking about prices or of what you purchased, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Keystone just means you double the price. You buy it for 100 sell it for 200 That's what keystone means. So that's a secret trade term. <laughs> I've let it out of the bag now. Ah, damn. <laughs> and it's everybody's goal to double their money. I mean, it's no matter where you're at in the business, um, in this trade, uh, if you can't do that kind of margin, you're not going to be in business long. You know, there's lots of things you don't make that kind of money on. There's some things you make better on. Um, but uh, if you don't make that much, I think it's generally accepted you're not going to survive. You know, there's, uh, this is a trade that you end up setting on a lot of material. You know, I've got opals from 2012 that I originally started with. And, you know, so it's not everything sells, not everything cuts, comes out right. So if you don't make a pretty good margin on things, you're just not going to survive. And Keystone is the goal of all people in this trade. Okay. Don't tell everybody that. This is a secret between us. <laughs> um, now, I know we've talked about it before, but question about um, finding any good opal in North America. Yes. Jeffrey, tell us all about it. Well, I like the ones in the... Jeffrey so wants to go back. Yeah, I had fun. Out, I had fun out in Nevada. Was it Nevada? No, it was Oregon. No, it was Nevada. No, it's Nevada. Yeah, yeah. In the the mines up there, that was. Yeah, that was we we had a blast. Yeah. You know, Nevada is the place to go for opal. Um, there's other places, uh, but Nevada is probably the best. Virgin Valley. Virgin Valley. What was the mine called? Was it Virgin Valley? Was that the name of the mine? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the area. The mine was, uh, what mine did we go to? Uh, was Rainbow, Ridge, Rainbow, Rainbow Ridge. Rainbow Ridge. Yeah. Rainbow Ridge was the, the mine we worked at. We stayed at Royal Peacock. Royal Peacock. You know, so there's quite a, you know, it's just one little area in Nevada that, uh, you know, there's probably 10 or 15 different uh, places that you can go fee dig. You know, and we did really well. I mean, it, it cost 700 bucks to, to get a load. And a load for two people takes you an entire day to go through, you know. So we had one load that was actually special, and the other load was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we did okay with it. But so my recommendation is buy one load at a time, maybe, and you know, might be something to be said for what part of the mine they dig it out of. It takes know. all day to do one. Yeah, four of us, two loads. It took us the entire day. You know, and there was people there that they had to come back the next day to finish their load. You know, so, but but a lot of fun, a lot of fun, great thing to do, and and we definitely got our money's worth out of it. You know, as well as having a blast. Yeah. Not cut a 
not cuttable. Yeah, most of it you can't cut. You keep it in a jar. It's just for display because it'll crack up. It'll guaranteed to crack. Wheel of Opal sometimes cracks, but Nevada Opal is almost guaranteed to crack if you leave it out. So when you dig it up, once you dig it out of the moist soil, you get it in a bucket of water immediately. You know, a couple hours, it'll start cracking. So. Wasn't there one mine, the Bonanza mine or something, that produced cuttable? Yeah, that's what they said. You know, there was more cuttable in the Bonanza mine, you know, that uh, was hydrophane, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was hydrophane material. And hydrophane doesn't have that problem of cracking, crazing. You know, that's the big thing about the Wheelow Opal is that over time, as it dries out, it's not going to crack on you. Uh, that's crazy, and a lot of uh, different mines, including many in Australia, and uh, and the Nevada mines, um, they just dry out and they they will craze. So, so the big benefit of the wheelo. Okay. All right. I think that's about it. That's about it. Well, that's about it for us. All right, folks, remember, shop online at moregems.com as well as subscribe to us on YouTube at More Gems. Uh, that's going to do it for us today. I want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, sign up for alerts for when we go live. Um, we're probably, I don't know what the, the near future is with Christmas here. We're probably not going to have a show like this we may have a uh, made up jewelry show is possible um, just hard to find the time to to get this all together but uh, our hope is we'll do a jewelry show sometime mid late november uh, so uh, sign up for alerts for when we go live also check out our video links and info at the bottom of this stream uh, until next time i'm steve moriarty keep on gemming Thank you.